All right, so this is the sample project for chapter six. Um, there are two main examples here, and what we're learning here is um, behavior trees. And so one example is pretty cut and dry. Uh, basically, it walks through this, uh, this tree here, starting from the top node in tier one, going down to tier two, and finally going to tier three. So you can imagine the tree with these branches right there. Uh, so essentially the way we set up is we gave these nodes names. This is just to sort of visually understand what it is we're doing. Uh, and in the book, of course, we have the diagrams that kind of explain that relationship. So you should look there for, for what that means. Um, but the, the bulk of it is in this one script here. So if we look at the uh, uh, tree, we've set a few things here. So let's uh, actually let's go back to the project and run it here in a sec. Okay, so if we run it, we'll notice it happens pretty quickly. And so here we're saying essentially that uh, we were able to successfully run through each of these nodes and we return a success here at the end. Uh, so let's walk through what that means. So here is a color for each state and it happens very quickly. So essentially, unless I pause this and ran it, you wouldn't see that happen. Um, yeah, it's even then it happens really quickly. So uh, the evalu evaluating color is uh, yellow, succeeded is green, and failed is red. And then we set each of our nodes here. So uh, in the book, we go over all the different types of nodes. So action node, uh, if we go to the definition here, we can see that it will simply perform an action delegate, right? And it'll give you back a state for success, whether it's running, et cetera, et cetera. Inverter will do the opposite, um, or rather, will just give you the opposite of whatever you tell us. So for example, in this case, we're saying that um, if it's a failure, it'll give you success. If it's success, it'll give you failure. Running is still running. Um, so that's one different one. And there's a selector node, which basically has a child uh, node. Um, and uh, One or more, actually. Um, so that'll do that. And in start, we assign these. So we start with the node number three so if we click that here in the scene view see that's the bottom most one so when we set these up we go from bottom to top uh, based on their tier their their generation in the tree so node three we set a new action node which we call and we pass it to an action which is not equal to target so uh, essentially if the current value is not equal to the target value then we say true success otherwise it's failure um, the target value is 20. Um, we'll walk through these in just a moment. Uh, then we set 2A as an action node, which is add 10. Uh, node 2B, which inverts node 3, which is that first one here. And node 2C uh, is actually also add 10. And then we assign these nodes. So we have a root node, and then we add those nodes to it. Sorry, we have a list of nodes that we add to this top one, which is the root node. So we add the, it's a selector for these three. And then uh, we set this current value string here. Um, and then we evaluate the root node, which then in turn will run through its children and evaluate those. And we'll update boxes just changes the color of these boxes based on the nerd state. Okay, so this all happens in one frame, which is why you don't see the colors update. But uh, what's important here is that if you change the parameters of what this does. So essentially what we're doing here is we're going through uh, node 2a and 2c are going to add 10 to a value that we specify here. So target value, we're trying to hit, uh, so current value, sorry. So we're actually going to end up with 20. We have a target value of 20. So because these actually end up being true, that's why we have a success. Uh, but let's go around and, and mess with that tree here. Let's make that 50. So we see it failed because we were looking for a current value of 50, but the total value ended up being 20. And so this top node, uh, the root node, which is node uh, ch -ch -ch, root node root node is a selector. So uh, this first one, which is node, uh, let's see. So this is a little hard to visualize these. 
uh, without the diagram that's in the book. So you have node 2a, which is going to add 10. Okay. Um, and so what that's saying here is to current value, we're going to add 10. And then we update the value text, which is this guy here. And then we check if it's equal to the target value, then it's a, it's a success. In this case, in the first step of this iteration, it's going to be a total of 10, because we start at 0, add 10. It's not equal to the target value, so it fails. And so we have a red here for failure. Um, then we run to the next one. And then that would be node 2b. So 2b is just uh, an inverter for node 3. So it's going to give us the opposite value of node 3, which is adding 10. So uh, node, actually is it node? So 2 b gives us node 3, and node 3 is an action node actually, not equal to target. So it's going to give us the opposite. So here, uh, we would have gotten a failure, or success rather, but because we're inverting that value through the inverter node, we actually end up with a failure. Uh, so even though this returned true, the parent ends up being, uh, sorry, even though this was a success, the parent does the inverse, and it gives us back a false. Finally, we have node 3, which is another addition node. Uh, sorry, 2C. Uh, it adds 10 more, and again, here what it's doing is it's checking if the current value is equal to the target value, which it isn't, because we set it to uh, we set it to 50, and at this point it's 20, as you see here when I run it. Um, then it fails, and therefore the parent fails, because all three children fail. In a selector node, you only need one of the children to be successful um, for it to, uh, to return success. Um, so essentially, uh, that's this demo here. So this is just showcasing how um, how a behavior tree works in concept. And so we also include an example. Uh, originally the second edition of the book only had this one and admittedly it's a little bit dry and um, we felt we wanted to add a little bit more so we added the card game test scene. So it's a little bit uh, tongue-in-cheek. It's a ripoff of well, just say a popular card game. Uh, we called ours Home Rock. And so it's a similar scenario here, except we've wrapped it in a like a gameplay example. So it's my turn, and I get to use an ability, so I'll use Fireball. And so now it's the enemy's turn. And you kind of see what's happening. The AI is thinking, and then they attacked me, so that my hit points drop from 20 to 18. Um, so then I'll hit a Fireball again, because I'm winning here. and drop theirs to 13 and they're thinking they're thinking they decided to defend themselves what that means is that they kind of get this buff that uh, makes it so they take less damage so when I hit them here it only does one point of damage they're thinking they're thinking and decided to defend itself uh, same thing so it's a little bit of a random chance there and um, it decided to attack me so it attacked me and so on and so forth until you win or, or, or lose um, so let's look at what's going on here. So there's a few things. There is a script for the human player, uh, and they both players actually have a player component. So they both have a player component. It states a few common things that players have, whether you're, you're an AI or a real player, it is your max health, your current health, and how what your low thresh, uh, low health threshold is. The low health threshold is used for uh, one of the conditions. So when the AI has to decide whether or not to use heal, it wants to know if it has low health. And so uh, that's what that's used for. And we have a few methods that uh, represent the actions the player can take, whether it's the computer or the human player. So buff is the defend. Um, so it just makes this is buffed condition equal to true. We'll see what that actually looks like here. Uh, the heal amount, or heal rather, will heal you for a random range uh, within min and max heal amount, and I'll add that to your current health. Damage will apply random damage between the min damage and max damage range, but if you're buffed, it's going to cut that damage in half and then remove the buff, right? And then it removes from your current health uh, the amount that, that we ended up with. So that's the player script, and then we have uh, the player controller. Oops. Uh, the player controller is. Uh, sort of mm, handling the UI. So there's a stone wall, healing light, fireball. Um, these are all sort of here as buttons. And so when you press one, it's going to call heal 
and end the turn. Here it's buff, end the turn. Here it's going to uh, uh, damage, and it's going to end the turn. Uh, so what we want to look at here is the uh, the human player. And that's actually it. That's actually all it does. The, unit, the enemy AI is what has the more interesting stuff. So it actually has an enemy behavior tree that controls its actions. And so, again, the book shows a diagram of how we represent these nodes. But essentially, it goes through a few scenarios. So it's going to run through and first check if it is going to, if it's got, if it's low on health. If it's low on health, it's going to prioritize healing. If it's not low on health, the next thing it's going to do if it's check if it can go for the kill. If it can, it's going to prioritize attacking. If neither of those are true, then there's a random chance, essentially, that it's going to buff itself or attack. And for that, we use a new sequence that we introduced for this example, which is the random binary node. Random binary node is essentially going to give you a true or false randomly. That's all it is. So it's going to give you a value between 0 and 1, because this is non-inclusive. And if it's 0, it's a success. If it's 1, it's a failure. And so we use that here in this, uh, in this, um, these checks here that we call. So the node will call critical health check. Own data, meaning the player data, if it has low health, and that's the a property for that Boolean we described earlier, if the current health is lower than the threshold that we described, then success. That means that this is the path to take. And as a result, it's going to call the heal itself uh, code. Uh, we'll see that in a second. Then uh, check player health is uh, we'll check the, the the opponent, so the human player's health. And if it has low health, then it returns a success because we're using that for whether or not we want to attack the player. And finally, we have a buff check. This one is going to give you, uh, if it's not already buffed, so if you don't have it, because you don't want to apply the buff if you already have it. So we're going to return a success, and that's going to give us, uh, that's going to tell us to run the binary check. Um, so essentially here in execute, we run through and we uh, do a few things. We run it in an I enumerator or a mono, uh, sorry, coroutine, because we want to give the illusion that the computer is thinking. So when you were running, you see like the AI is thinking, and it would wait a moment, then it would take an action. Uh, that's purely for the illusion. So then it's going to check. If the health check is a success, uh, it's going to prioritize that. So it's going to heal itself, and it's not going to do the rest. And then it's going to call this tree executed callback. If this is not a success, then it's going to try the next thing. If the attack mode, attack check node is a success, meaning it can kill the player or wants to attack the player, it's going to do that. Otherwise, it's going to buff itself um, if this is a success. Because this condition here is depending on a binary random chance, if it's it's going to either do this or it's going to fall back to attacking you and then finally uh yeah it's callback here and the callback is um handled here on the uh ui controller uh, because we want to update a few things we want to update the set turn uh, which is handing the turn back and forth between the player and the ai and we want to um, set the control state so the player can't click anything when it's not their turn. Um, and finally, there's a game over message that we print once you won. Uh, so here, we'll see if we can get to it. We just prioritize attacking. Here, we have to wait for the player, for the enemy. Make a decision. See how the player, the buttons disappear and then they reappear. And think we got this keep attacking if it buffs itself it's kind of it takes a long time um, but essentially this is just a, a better illustration of how you can actually apply a behavior tree that's not like some calculator essentially uh, when we f oh, it healed itself of course and it did again so uh, this is actually, yeah, there we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so by no means is this an exercise in game design because this, you could be stuck in a state for a while because it, because it's critical health, it's going to keep trying to heal itself. So a way you can avoid that is if you extended the code and you had it so it can't heal every single turn that would avoid this situation here. But I think 
it'll get to the point where it thinks it can kill you so it'll try to attack and so then we're down to like a race essentially but this you can't get stuck in this mode for a while <laughs> and it's basically chance at this point RNG gods are not with me today almost Oh my gosh, it refuses to die. Um, how about this? We'll make it easier. So we'll give the enemy AI one hit point because otherwise we're uh, in this for the long haul. So we attack it, hit points are negative three, then the state changes to game over and when you're finally able to kill it. And so that's how we control both player actions and enemy actions and we do so in a turn-based approach using a behavior tree um, and that's that's it for the examples in this scene uh, and then that's all the code essentially so that's it for chapter six